Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and in this video, we will uh, talk a little bit about SD access. So, I've been getting quite some requests on people asking me, uh, can you do more follow ups on the SD access videos? Maybe show us a topology and you know, probably put in a lab and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm just trying to do a bit of that. Probably, I'll not be able to cover every single um, SD access concept uh, in the in the labs, but you know, I'll try to do my best and show some of the interesting use cases, you know, inside SD access, just like how we have done the uh, SD WAN labs, right? Uh, that being said, this is a very simple topology I put in place, right? Uh, I have my edges here at the bottom. Um, I have my control and border nodes around here, right? Uh, these are 9500, CAT, CAT 9500. Uh, this is your CAT 9300. Uh, then we have your campus core devices, generally your CSR 1000V, right? Uh, just I put this here because you know you're probably gonna have uh, another campus and uh, you know a bunch of uh, devices and network and uh, you know services coming in from that right so that can connect down here um, and uh, the other thing is I, I have a common switch here wherein all my um, you know on my uh, DNAC related or sorry SDA related components are connected like your DNAC is connected here, your ICE is connected, WLC, you know, DHCP, DNS, and then I, I'll be sitting down here. This is my jump server, right? So, uh, um, I mean, it might be a little difficult for you guys to recreate this lab unless you have the physical components because for this lab, you'll really need the CAT 9300, 9500 to, you know, check out all the features, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, it might not work. The other thing is, uh, as of today, I'm not sure if uh, DNAC is available as a VM. Uh, I mean, as of today, I believe it's uh, available only inside. Uh, you can just deploy this inside your UCS servers. So I don't think you can virtualize this either. Uh, but I might be wrong. If if you can, probably you can then try it. Um, ICE, obviously, you can use a virtual ICE, right? Uh, uh, we have probably tested that in the previous video. So you can use virtual ICE, then you can even have a WLC which is virtual as well, right? Um, EWLC, right? That's basically it. And then there is a server here doing my DNS, DHCP, maybe in a actual production environment. I, I would also probably go and put my CA, you know, server also over here. And basically all the common services, you know, can be deployed on this one common server. So, uh, and then here at the bottom, I have an access point as well, right? And then this is going to be a wireless client. So that is it. I mean, this is literally what we have. Uh, the whole setup right like I said I might not be able to do the whole um, you know videos on all the features but let me I'll try my best right uh, now the other thing which I have put together here is something interesting this is the first time I'm trying this right so I put together a mind map right so SD access can be a bit can, you know overwhelming because there are a lot of features a lot of configurations a lot of interesting things to check out so it might be a bit overwhelming at times right so to help with that what i've done is i have kind of created a mind map right and uh, my old sd access video uh, videos probably you know i put them out a few months ago so just to brush your basics right and so i've covered almost everything here and we can probably quickly go through it and as i go through the labs i'll try to stick to you know what i have done here so that you understand the flow and the workflow when you have to deploy sd access in your in your environments right um okay so that being said uh, like I said, this is again not a very concise, uh, um, it's, it's not a very, you know, exhaustive list of features and exhaustive configuration. There is probably, I'm just again touching the, you know, uh, eye step here. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more, you know, which can be done. Um, but this is just my workflow, which I have put together based on my investigation and my, you know, troubleshooting, right? Cool. So that being said, uh, let's just go uh, clockwise, right? So what do we have here? Interesting. So um, in this video, in the first video, this is like the first video of the um, in, uh, lab series of SDA, right? So I'm not going to, I'll probably do uh, maybe one or two features, uh, but I want to give a very good context, right? So to start. Okay, so let's go clockwise. So the first thing is your licenses. So you have two types of licenses, um, you know, in SDA access. One is your essential and advantage, right? Obviously, there's going to be slight disparity of features. So you can check that out. You'll find documentation. But there are two types of features, right? Uh, uh, so two types of licenses. And the features which, you know, you, you are going to use here will basically depend on that, right? Uh, the benefits of SDA access, I think we have talked about this a lot. Uh, first thing is, you know, yeah, with SDA access, uh, you can now go for a L3 access, uh, you know, uh, L3 at your access layer. 
which is really good because you don't have STP, you can do ECMP and so on, right? Um, you also can stretch your L2, right, across your edges, right? That way you can, you know, enable mobility, VM mobility, and you can also have very seamless, um, you know, roaming and all of that, right? So that's uh, basically like stretching your L2 VLANs across your fabric. The other thing is network segmentation, right? Uh, and um, in terms of uh, network segmentation, you can do both macro and micro segmentation. Macro segmentation you can do using, you know, VNs, right? We will look into this, uh, basically your virtual network and uh, uh, your micro segmentation is basically, your virtual networks are nothing but VRFs, right? Uh, and your micro segmentation is mainly going to be what? Your trust seg, your SGT, seg, scalable group tax. So that being said, what are the various components of STA? You will have generally like an, you know, edge, uh, you know, device. Uh, you will have an access point sometimes, right? All It's not compulsory. Uh, you will have a control node. Obviously, it's needed because that's going to be taking care of the, that's like a mapping server for your Lisp protocol, right? Remember in the overlay, we are basically using VXLAN and Lisp. VXLAN is for data encapsulation, decapsulation, whereas Lisp is going to be your control plane protocol. And then you have your border router, which is uh, important as well. Um, so border router is the one which is going to, uh, you know, kind of like in, uh, liaise with the external uh, network, right? And you can have like two types of border networks. I believe it is known and uh, unknown, right? Well known, unknown, there are two ways to define it. Uh, if it is a known border, border router, it basically means that it is going to give you an exit path to the rest of your enterprise network. If it is unknown, it basically means it is going to give you an exit path to the internet or something like that, right? Out of the fabric, inside the fabric. So, border router basically plays the role of, you know, like a gatekeeper, right? It's going to allow the routes outside or, you know, allow the traffic from outside to come inside. So, that's your border. Um, then you have your intermediate node, right? This is actually not part of the fabric. It will be the underlay node, right? Where you are basically running your whole, uh, I mean, in my topology, probably I don't have, a, let me see, I don't think I have an intermediate node. Yeah, I don't have. I literally rightly have edge and rightly the border, but you know, somewhere in the middle over here, you can have intermediate nodes and those nodes need not be running VXLAN, Lisp, nothing, right? They they will just forward packets based on uh, IP, right? So uh, that's that's your underlay network. Uh, obviously, they're going to have like the protocol like ISIS or something, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to be part of the underlay, but then that's it. They're not going to run any special features of STA, right? So that's your un intermediate node. Again, not all of these nodes are mandatory to have, right? But I've just tried to mention all of the ones which I can think of, right? So, all right. So the other one is your, um, after the intermediate, you have your fusion here, right? The fusion is basically, um, again, uh, mainly one of the use case of fusion router is for inter VN communication, right? So um, maybe from the topology, if I could explain, so it's basically going to be like this. So you probably are going to have a lot of VNs over here. You're probably going to have an admin VN, probably going to have a production VN. Now, when the traffic basically has to talk between two different VNs, by default, it is not allowed, right? Traffic inside a VN stays inside the VN and it doesn't cross the VN. But if you really want like your, say, finance department to talk to the sales department, then what you can do is on your fusion router, right? In this case, we can think of the common switch only as the fusion router. So on the fusion router, what you could do is you can kind of do some kind of a, um, you know, VRF route leaking and you know how you can leak the routes between VRFs, right, using the route targets and so on. So that functionality is mainly taken care of by your fusion router, right. Again, not a very compulsory piece to have. If you really don't want any inter VN communication, then probably you'll not even see a fusion router in your network, right. So that being said, uh, let me just go back. Yeah. So, yeah, so the fusion is done. Then you have your WLC, you have your ICE. Right, I need not explain that. I think pretty straight, straightforward. Now the interesting piece comes, which is the DNAC, right? So the whole lab, whatever we are doing is we are doing with respect to the DNAC because rest of the components are pretty straightforward, right? And they are like, they are part of the traditional network as well. The only new component or the new person, the new kid on the block is the DNAC. All right, so now when we talk about DNAC, right? Uh, this might look overwhelming at first because I put in a lot of stuff, but uh, these are some of the things which I tried, right? Uh, this is, it's not that you need to implement all of this to, uh, you know, to make your STA solution work, right? So uh, that being said, let's, let's at least talk about the stuff and 
um, you know wherever I can do the demos I'm basically going to plug in my demos out there all right cool starting with the DNAC so DNAC is an appliance right uh, uh, and you basically got to install this on a UCSC server now when you install it you can install one single DNAC or you can kind of install it you know as a cluster right um, and you'll you have a I mean if you look at the physical specifications of the hardware you'll see you have some um, you know 10 gig ports I guess you have a 1 gig port and you know there is a recommendation on uh, which kind of a port you have to use for data which kind of a port you have to use it for um, you know cluster link right and so on so that's that's out of the context of this uh, uh, video so uh, you can just check out the whole physical installation of you know DNAC right uh, but once you have installed uh, maybe let me show you how the DNAC looks like right so once you have installed, you basically can access DNAC over your uh, or the web uh, port, right? And this is how the DNAC, the fresh DNAC looks like, right? Uh, if you have, probably let me just go down to the settings. So if you have used, uh, like I say, a cluster, right? In which case you will probably find, uh, you know, more number of hosts or you will have like multiple, um, you know, cluster, uh, uh, all, all, the, all the various uh, devices in your cluster also will be listed right so uh, that's mainly it so um, yeah so this is the look and feel obviously we will dig more into this but let's go back to my mind map now so uh, like I said you can either install one single DNAC or a cluster right a cluster of three five or so on you can't have an even cluster you have to uh, you can't have like cluster of two you should always have an odd number cluster right so uh, uh, that being said uh, the other thing is apps um, now it's it's very modular i would say the whole solution is very modular right so you can all of this various apps which you see here just go down go back to system settings right uh, under software updates you'll basically see a lot of installed apps now like i said the whole licenses part is tacked to this so if you want a certain particular app then if you have that license then you will be able to install that particular app right and also it kind of uh, dnac kind of helps you to um, uninstall a particular app and install a new version if you want right so because all of these apps are individually developed so if there is a new version of this app you can quickly grab it and download it and install it right so that's pretty cool so all the updates and all of that you know is taken care in one single place right so that's with respect to apps every single thing which you see inside DNAC is basically part of some kind of an app right and those apps are then tied back to your licenses so that being said uh, uh, what else now the first thing which one has to probably do is you know you're done with the installation the next thing one has to do is probably start looking at the settings right because you know any any app uh, sorry any appliance you install you have to look at the settings right so settings so that's where I was earlier so this is where you go to settings you go to system settings and if you go here basically you'll be shown this system 360 page right uh, some of the settings which i have done personally is uh, the first thing which i did is um, uh, i believe i i put in the uh, certificates right so um, here i am using a self signed certificate but there are two ways of you know um, uh, making sure your certificates work so you see here in my case my browser is shouting it's telling that it's not secure but that's okay because it's just a lab right but if you don't want this and you want a very much secure and uh, uh, secure certificate then you know there are, there are two options right so if you see in my mind map you'll see there are two options one is you can make the dnac itself act as the, the you know uh, ca server right certificate authority or you can also make dna as part of some kind of a pki infrastructure which you might already have in your network right so generally in a big enterprise you will have some kind of a pki right so you can make your dnac as uh, uh, kind of like a subscriber to that particular you know uh, or, or more like a, you can make it as a subordinate CA of that particular you know PK infrastructure because DNAC at the end of the day uh, you know will uh, there might be some use cases later where DNAC will issue some certificate so it should have the issuing certificate you know that kind of a capability so in that case basically it's better to make your DNAC as your uh, subordinate CA and make DNAC you know as part of the existing PK infrastructure so there are two options and you can choose one of it right so that being said so that's that's related to the first part of the setting so other settings which I have done is mainly I have connected my eyes to this particular uh, uh, you know uh, DNAC right so I have integrated my eyes to the DNAC um, so I think 
this might be a little surprising so i think maybe i missed a small piece here yeah i think i missed it so and i was supposed to talk about dnac i was supposed to go again clockwise from components i think i at least started from installation so just let's me take a minute back right and uh, scroll back and if you talk about dnac there are three important components of dnac one is your you know ndp right it's a data platform it's mainly your um, network i think it's called network data platform and it's mainly uh, for your assurance piece right all the data insights analytics and all of that is done by this engine then you have your apkm right earlier before cisco sd access apkm was separately sold or separately available as well it's nothing but your application you know policy infrastructure controller um, and enterprise module right this is like the same apic which you have on your uh, aci as well but that's mainly for your data centers this is the enterprise you know version of it uh, and the policy engine, right? All the policies which you do on, you know, DNAC, they are basically going to be deployed via the ICE, right? So that's why I was telling, you know, the uh, integration of ICE is important. So uh, when you're doing the settings, like I said, I've mentioned only a couple of settings here with respect to certificates, but you can do quite a lot of settings on that page, right? And one of the things which I have done is I have integrated my DNA with ICE over there. And that's what you see here. It's pretty simple though. Let me actually show you how the integration works. Yeah, so I was talking about the ICE integration, right? So you can see this is my ICE server, which I have added and it's pretty easy to add. You just click on add, right? Come down to the authentication and policy servers and you can just write in your or uh, type in your ICE, uh, you know, server, right? The IP address of your ICE. In my case, I believe it is 172.16.24.11, right? From my topology also, you can have a look at that. Then you mentioned the secret. So this is the secret which, you know, your ICE, uh, which will be used you know by um, which will be used to configure um, uh, on your network devices right at the end of the day all this triple a configuration will be pushed down to my network devices right so that time uh, the secret which is going to be used is the one which is here right and then you can enable this i server here and there will be uh, apart from that i don't believe there is any major you know configurations to be done right uh, oh, you'll also obviously have to put in the admin configuration of your ice right at basically username admin and password of the admin that's it so once you do that it's going to take few minutes for this integration to work probably it might take it took me like around 15 20 minutes um, you know it refreshes and finally you know it shows you that the status is active uh, and to verify that everything worked what you will have to do is um, you'll have to basically come down here and check you can see the uh, primary you know ice is working and the px grid is also working so what is this px grid px grid is more like um, Think of it in a simple terms is nothing but uh, a platform for various security products to kind of, you know, uh, uh, share information, right? So, um, so uh, this, this particular DNAC, right, uh, basically connects to ICE as a subscriber of PX Grid services. So, this is my ICE and let me show you where all of that happens. Uh, so, one thing is you need to have some prerequisite, I believe the uh ice version the basic ice version needed is around 2.3 at least right uh, for the integration to work uh that being said uh, the other stuff is with respect to say deployment um you will you will basically need to enable px grid services over here right basically go down to deployments and enable px grid services um probably also will need to enable xxp which i am not done so let me just enable that because might be needed for our later you know uh, so let me also enable while we are here probably the rest of the stuff i might be using all of these later right so that being said so uh, you do uh, you you enable the px grid which is very important for the integration also remember the fqdn name because you will have to type this fqdn name when you are adding the ice so this exact fqdn name right now once you have done uh, some of the basic stuff um, uh, obviously you will also have to enable ssh on your ice right uh, without which uh, that's also one of the prerequisites. again you can look at the deployment guide for uh, there are probably like few checklist of things which you have to do on your eyes before you do the integration um, apart from that uh, uh, profiling also you can enable some of the profiling stuff whichever you know is needed whatever uh, probes you know you want to deploy on your dnac you know you can enable those stuff um, now the px grid services is very interesting right so if you come down here here you can see um, before doing the integration you will have one two three four five you will have just the five entries but uh, as the integration goes through once it becomes active you will see these two entries coming in here right um, and this is nothing but you know the ndp engine of your dnac connecting to ice and this is literally the 
you know apk i'm you know, trying to connect twice right and you will also get um, uh, alert over here you know basically asking you to approve the integration so it will appear here right uh, and you'll have to just go and click approve all and it will get approved right so you can again read up on px grid services a little more because it's a very interesting platform uh, not just i mean you can use px grid services even outside dnac right you can use your ice um, and because you see what is happening is in ice whenever ice is used as a you know uh, identity the management you know uh, system for a network it collects a lot of information from the devices from the clients right and if you have a third party you know appliance or you have some application like your dnac or some other network controller you can now easily share that information which is collected by ice you know to this particular platform so and that is done using the px grid services so um, yeah so that's mainly with respect to ice and dna so now let's come back to my mind map again so you see why the use of mind map right we so that i don't get distracted with the topics and i can come back uh so that's good so yeah so we're done with this now we'll just look at some of the tools right which are available on my dnac so i think that that once we're done with that i think we can end this video because i want to keep this short um so let's go back to my home page of dna right so when you go back to the home page this is how it appears you will have your assurance tab so by the way what am i running i'm running i think the latest version 1.3 right probably i'm not sure i think there is 1.3.3.4 uh, or something released i guess latest but anyway i have 1.3.3.1 anyway so uh, at the top like i said this is your assurance stuff right assurance summary uh, we'll get to that probably later but this is basically important now um, this is the i would consider this to be the home page and these are the various you know tabs which you have i believe this is something new which has come in recently but uh, design policy provision and assurance these are some of the most important so yeah this is mainly for your api okay so the first four tabs or the first you can think of this as a dashboard right something to uh, whichever makes it easier right so um, design policy provision and assurance design is the place where you actually put in the network related configurations right um, you can create your uh, uh, SGT, you can create your IP uh, pools, you can create a lot of stuff here. Uh, that being said, um, the next is your um, policy. So here you define your, you know, virtual networks, you define your access contracts, you define your access policies and so on, right, which is needed for your network. Provision, you come to provision always, like irrespective of you do a, you know, design, you do a policy, you always come to provision because this is the engine which pushes the configurations onto the devices, right? So you have to come to this and you will see me going to this multiple times. Assurance is mainly your insights piece, right? Uh, it helps you, it's kind of like a health check of your whole network. And then at the bottom, you have some kind of tools, right? So these are individual tools um, and which can again enable your network. Now, the interesting thing about SD access is, um, you know, some of these tools, you can use it even though you're not running the full SD access solution, right? Because uh, you can probably do discovery even if you don't have a SD access fabric. So these are all individual or a standalone tools. You can use it in an enterprise network irrespective of, you know, you're running a, um, because you see a security adversaries and all of that, right? So this is uh, very useful for an enterprise network irrespective of if you're really running the whole SD access solution or not, right? So what else? Uh, that's That's pretty much it. So we will, like I said, we will pick the first tool in this video uh, we'll just go to discovery right so we are on discovery right now um, and coming back to my topology as well if you remember what do I have so let's go back to I think this is pretty much clear where are we we did the whole clockwise stuff we started with DNAG we did the components we did the installation I mean, we talked about installations we talked about the settings now we are talking about the device discovery right so that being said let's go back to my topology to understand what's happening so this is the topology and in this discovery uh, tool or using the discovery tool um, <clears throat> we basically use to find or to find the existing underlay devices right and it will do using like cdp or it will also do using the ip address ranges right so we have to go and define like a discovery profile right so that users are able to you know leverage the credentials defined in the design app so we'll, we'll basically um, we'll we'll go through that so let's go back let's go back to the discovery tab here currently there is no discovery you see everything seems to be zero so what do we do we click on discovery let's add a discovery 
right so we are basically now creating a something called as a discovery profile right so here let me just give a name we'll probably give a name something like pod to discovery because i'm just my pod or the device the lab where i'm testing this is like a pod 2 so i'm just going to put it as pod 2 you know br the discovery br is basically a border router right so we, when you are discovering i mean you can discover all the devices but in my case i want to discover only the border router because border router is the only one which has a bit of configurations on it right there is my border router yeah so here i have my border 1 border 2 i have my h1 and h2 right so nothing very complicated uh, configuration let me show you that So enable okay come here so show IP interface brief I think I have basically an IP address on it right 192 to uh, 100.250 right so that's the I believe that's the only and do I have a management IP in case I'm not sure uh, I have a loopback address right that's it there's nothing major configuration on this Probably there will also be a bit of BGP configuration if I'm not wrong. Is there? Let's check that. Now let's do a show run just to quickly see what is happening here. Right, so that's nothing. Scroll down. See, IP device tracking is not enabled yet. So I want you to know that because that will be enabled at a later stage. Yeah, so uh, there's just a username password put in there nothing else other than that probably there'll be a little bit of a interface configs yeah i have a loopback uh, because you know loopbacks are needed for your vtaps right so you can see the loopback is up there but anyway the vxlan anything everything will be pushed by the dnat so uh there is probably a default route connect uh, you know pointing upwards towards the campus core routers there is uh there is there are two vlans here because you know the campus core routers are connected again the campus core routers are basically created on your ucs boxes right so um, um this this particular vlan is only put up there so that they are connected to this border router and vlan one is created so that will be needed for a lan automation yeah that's it i mean see you don't have any major configurations on this more like saying plain box itself right cool so that being said uh, so we have um, so that's about the vr router so let's go back here so let's create our discovery so discovery will it's basically enabling our dnat to go and discover these devices right so what we'll do, do let's uh, do uh, instead of doing uh, CDP let's go and explicitly put the range right and we want to put the range which is um, you know you saw those IP addresses right which I was using 192.2 let me just check that 192.2 uh, 100.250 is a loopback I think two, uh, 245 was the odd interface address so I'm gonna use 245 here right and uh, the other one obviously is gonna be 246 Okay, so that's your for the second one, and uh, yeah, um, let me see. Give me a second. All right, yeah. So we are basically using the loopback addresses of uh, you know the uh, both the routers, right? Uh, border one and border two for our uh, discovery process, right? So there you go, 245, 246, we are explicitly telling DNAC to go and discover, you know, everything about the devices which are in this range. <clears throat> then um, the preferred management, yeah, there you go, I'm going to select the loop back again. Now the credentials, right, we'll have to provide the device credentials to this guy. So let's go and add credentials. When you're adding credentials, we'll start with the CLI. So let me say the first CLI, I'm going to put the username. Okay, there is a name, so both of them can be the same. So this is my username. My password, I believe, is uh, three, right? So that should be up. That's good. So let's take that and let's enable it here, right? So we are basically putting a CLI credentials for the device. And um, do we... Uh, uh, let's let's probably save as global settings because if uh, somewhere if we have not defined you know we are basically going to use these credentials then we will go for our let's save this see it appeared here now we can go to our snmp for snmp we will again go and select uh, uh, read only right so uh, 
we have two things we have read and write so for read only we are going to put the uh, string as let's say public right obviously don't use this this is a very weak way of uh, securing it but okay that's good so let's save that again as and when you save it you know it starts appearing here right let's go to the right right so we can go and put <coughs> so for that we are going to put the name as read write and let me use the community as private for this let's save this let's see if this is good yep let's save that so once we are done with that then what do we do um, i think that should be enough for us i mean we don't have to uh, add more stuff netcon https probably we can skip for now yeah so that's being that's good so let's scroll down and let's see okay so in the advanced section we can even select the telnet because by default it will use ssh to connect to the devices but you know we can enable telnet as well shouldn't be a problem okay cool so we are good with that so let's um yeah i think if we are all good we can go and start the discover process um meanwhile let me also check if my console is up here because i want to show you guys the fun stuff which uh, you know happens as soon as you know i click that button so let's see admin i think i missed the a over there okay so okay so here we go let me just uh... okay so that's good anyway so we are here now um, hope i have the archive command up here because uh, let me say check that i want to enable the you know uh, logging yeah so logging is enabled which is good so now as soon as i press the button right uh, so border one border two so as soon as i press the uh, discover button here uh, DNAC will try to connect to my devices and it will do the discovery and it will not just do the discovery it will also push, push some configurations right it will push some uh, basic configuration so uh, what I'm going to do is I have already saved the configurations of the device before this right so we can so that we can do some kind of a diff right uh, and show you guys what changed on the device so that's good so let me also do one thing give me a second all right I think we are good now so let's go back here and we are good with all the settings let's review it once again uh, all of this looks good the uh, CLI credentials all of this good okay so let's go and do discover you can either schedule this discover to be done at a later stage of time or you can do it right now as well so we are going to do it right now right so as soon as this thing starts you can see uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know as you refresh this some kind of activity starts showing up over here uh, it take some time probably but let's wait you can stop as well at any point of time right so that's a good feature um, as and when the devices are getting you know uh, discovered you will see the success you know the number against the success increasing oh there you go the discovery has actually completed so let's go back to the devices um, probably it's not completed yet it will take some time right though it shows us that success over there doesn't mean that it's completed so you can see here dnac has tried to you know connect to my device you can see the um, sd access you know sd admin sd admin you know logging in right and it is trying to run the enable command uh, which is good what else so yeah so it has tried to log in and uh, I'll, I'll just keep the screen for some time and uh, you know we'll probably come i'll pause the screen now and come back and we can review all the configurations which DNAC has actually pushed. All right, looks like it's completed. So you can see now, I can see two devices were successfully discovered. And you can see the information on the right hand side. You can see the status looks green. Uh, there was some kind of ICMP testing done, I believe. The SNMP configurations, whatever we put in, looks good. The CLI credentials also look good. So, uh, you know, looks like the discovery went well. Uh, we can now go back to my uh, inventory and check uh, the set of devices so where do we do that <clears throat> let's go to provision um, yeah so you can see there is inventory here 
right so you can see these two devices got discovered right the device names and all we did not put the obviously the um, um, uh, dnac automatically put it right and you can see you need to compulsorily say this like the last thing status should say managed right when this when you see this it means that you know everything looks good right now that being said let's now go and check what what happened actually so you can see here no no where am i yeah so let me just go up see these are these are all the configurations which the which dnac actually pushed in you can see it's kind of removing some you know pki some probably some old pki and is probably putting in the new you know uh, trust point and it is doing some ssh related stuff um, it's enrolling it's doing some crypto stuff and so on right so uh, like i said when it, when it's discovering it makes sure that you know if there are certain configurations missing on the devices it also puts that right now to exactly see um, what it, configurations were put in we could probably run a command something like show archive uh, let's say archive config uh, diff differences and let's go to the flash i think in the flash i'll probably have uh, some base configuration so i have a base configuration i'm going to compare that with the current configuration which is on my device running there you go so you see these are all the configurations which the dnac book so these are whenever you see a plus right it means that those configurations were changed so those were basically added by dnac um, during the discovery process right so discovery i think you guys probably know by now what it actually means uh, it basically is nothing but uh, um, you know it's basically our uh, uh, dnac trying to um, you know discover the um, underlay network discover the um, devices as such forget about underlay overlay for a minute it's just trying to discover devices you can manually uh, discover it as well by explicitly putting ip one after the other or you can do a ip range just like what we did and when you do that it is going to basically go through all the ips mentioned and it's going to go and uh, uh, kind of like do the discovery right so maybe let me do this copy the current configuration uh, to a new file so that you know later we can probably compare the new changes which we will basically bring in right so we could do that so let's go and save this and say we'll call it as border one discovered config right want to overwrite yep right so the same thing we will basically go and um, do it on my border 2 as well see here on border 2 as well you can see the configurations have been pushed by our uh, dnac over here right which is good so let's go down and let's just save this maybe uh, sorry but i'm just saving the configuration so that you know later at any point of time we can basically go and check uh, the further changes which we will introduce in the later sections right of the lab Cool. So, discovered, I believe. Dot CFG. I think this should work. Okay, there you go. So that's good. Now I've already shown you guys the inventory, right? So the inventory is pretty straightforward. You have all the IPs, and I think you also see the product information here, which is good. Um, let's also do one thing. Let's go here and um, enable. Oh, device role is already enabled so this is just a filter if you want to disable something you know from this particular list you can do that by removing that so now you see here um, uh, you have the device role right so we can do that we can do this thing so where is the device role here so we can go and change the device role we know that this particular device is going to be our border router right so let's go and select it as border router and let's go and select this as the border router as well both of these are going to be our border routers right so that's important because that will enable our dnac to then in future whenever the next um, configuration is pushed it's going to push the um, you know border related configuration like your you know uh, lisp related and vxlan stuff whatever is needed right that will be pushed so this is very important to define the role of a particular router okay so that being said what else now probably let's also have a look at uh, this interesting topology uh, so there is a very interesting tool here we, we looked at discovery let's look at the topology tool so the topology tool i think you can also kind of link it to the in your epic you probably had this right you can see here you had the whole uh, topology you can visualize it and this tool helps you to do that 
um, you know in our case we just have only two devices right we just have our border one and border two so that's that's why um, you know you basically see this but as and when we go on building the fabric you will see more and more devices here right uh, maybe uh, in the future videos as and when we go on adding sites we can go and assign these devices to those sites but we'll probably look at that in the next video right so thanks a lot for watching and uh, uh, that's mainly uh, what I wanted to cover in this video right just to summarize what we looked at uh, we kind of did a brief about uh, what is SD-WAN and we went through uh, the mind map right we uh, we we did a clockwise kind of a uh, check right right now we are on uh, we checked the components right now and then we talked about the installation we talked about the settings we looked into the device discovery tool right so let me just color the stuff which we have completed let me do it in green right so uh, we did this we did this this is good uh, we started uh, we did the components okay we talked about installation settings and we also finished this one in the next video probably we'll look at the design right thanks for watching guys and uh, have a good day